Okay, it is now. I, you know, I'm so bad at remembering what time of day it is. It's, it's quarter to eight at night on Thursday evening, and I'm glad to report that the paper mache has worked. As you can see, I've moved it from the corner, and it didn't entirely collapse, which is a great success. So now it's time to get the sculpture mold on there, layer it up, let it dry, then we can paint it, and then. Wazo! There we go. <sighs> and for those of you wondering, the background noise is business players. I like to have something on the background while I'm working, so I'm sorry. So, here we have the porridge cocoon, the consistency of cheesecake, not cheesecake, cottage cheese. I've got to get that on there quickish before it starts to set. Let's go. And as. <laughs> As Platform 10 said, yes, I do like the messy jobs. Oh, oh Lord. It's more like it. Right, that's most of it covered. I've used all my sculptor mould. Um, it's got a nice rocky, rough terrain, which is what I was going for. It doesn't matter that all some of the papers are still visible. It is all going to get covered again with more PVA and paint as well. I just need to make a stand for the back of it. Like that. That's holding in place pretty well. So there we are. So I'll attach that, get it in place after I've painted it. Job you're good. Mm -hmm. Well it's Monday night and as you can see that didn't go quite as planned. I got as far as paper mache and everything again and I also added a layer of sculptor mould to try and ridge it up the, uh, the structure there and it didn't work it became very heavy and it deformed the cage so I've added some fiberglass which has made things more rigid but the issue I'm now having is the inside of the cage is warped and changed shape so lo locals are now derailing as they go through it so I'm now going to have to attack this whole situation a different way there it is, so this is the remnants of an old back scene. The tunnel mouth is there. Sorry about the video quality guys, it's late at night and I have very poor lighting. Hello my reflection. So the idea is now, with these two walls sort of in place, these are removable. So to add some rigidity to the project, I'm going to glue strips across here, 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 and there, and there. To make like a, a roof if you will but also not a roof and then I can put a beach on top of it and I can put a big section back there and then I can put some more card on there and build it up from there and then that section will be removable and that section will be removable and there'll be plenty of space inside of it as you can see there Plenty of space inside and thus plenty of clearance. So that's it for this evening. But tomorrow, which will be Tuesday, I need to go to DCC Concepts to pick up um, some bits and pieces for the other bit of the track, which we are going to look at in a moment. Oh, and um, we'll finish this later, later on. Anyway, let's have a look at that track. Right, today's the day when we finally address the sidings, engineer sidings. We're going to get the new track on there. I've got the Legacy track from DCC Concerts which is very nice. Um, I think you all saw that a couple of videos ago um, when I went up there for a visit. I've got the new point here which is much nicer. All I need to do is prepare this for DCC use so there's a bit of wiring to be done under there. Once that's done I can get the track in place and hopefully it'll look good. Let's have a go. Right, so the hardest thing to do was getting these Code 100 to Code 75 converters there. If you can see them, I have to put these brass contacts in, and not all of the insides of these little devils were perfect. So a lot of them just bent. But I managed to find four, I only need four to do this. 
that actually worked. Next time I'm just going to get close to 75 points, but there we are. We've soldered the two rails together, so there'll be constantly power going through all these, so that's great for DCC. Right then, let's get the code 75. DC Concept Legacy Track, which I bought earlier this morning. It is absolutely beautiful. Hopefully you can see that okay. The main bits are in place. I'm going to now connect this up to the existing bit of rail that I have here. And then, we're going to have the end bits on there. Okay. Right then, there we go. So that's now in there. The converters are on there. You know, it's a little bit of a gap. So we'll just put a sleeper under there. Get that glued in place now. And then we can add some extra bits of rail on the end there. So, what I'm going to do for the height difference in the rail, you can see this is where the double O rail is. And that's nice and firm with the, uh, the base board there, but this gap here, you can just see, and then there it's fine. So this raised bit, what I'm going to do is once I finish the end section over here, we'll go to that in a minute, I'm going to do rather like they do with the rear railway, and use ballast to actually keep that up right. So that'll be interesting. Shouldn't be too difficult to do, should be quite... Simple, bit of brushing, bit of shifting, and a bit of tapping. That should work out rather well. Because you don't want to pin this track down, ideally. Just use the glue, because it's super fine. And it's super easy to manipulate it and make it straight. So, let's move down this side here. As you can see, it's short. So, I'm going to get some more of this bullhead rail. And just cut little sections to finish them up to the... Uh, up to the end there, and for that I'm going to use these little track cutters that I got from BCC Concepts as well, these are like 16, 17 quid, and they are super sharp. So that rail there is ever so slightly longer, so I'm just going to hold it in place, and then I'm going to trim literally just a little bit off it, just so those two rails are the same height. There you go, as you can see, that's nice and perfect now. That's nice and smooth. And we'll get the core 75 rail joiners on there. Cut two sections of this stuff. Put them in place, then we can ballast it, glue it down, hold it in place. Spot on. So we've got our two sections of track now, about 8 inches each. They're going to go on there. I've got some spare sleepers as well. So they're going to go in there, like that. Probably do it that, actually, to be fair with you. And then we're going to use these proper legacy railhead joiners. They're called 75 to 75. Put them on there. Connect it all up. And then we can ballast the whole thing. You notice these things are like a gold or a brass. I think they're actually gold. Either gold or brass. I know that they're uh, really super highly conductive. Probably gold knowing DCC <laughs> concepts. They're not skimpal things, are they? They're not known for cheaping out, so I'm going to just assume that they're gold because they certainly look like gold. I'm going to put these spare ones back in this bag in a bit. Right. Okay. Now those are freshly cut rails. They should just go straight on there. All joined up. That's nicely lengthened out now. I just need to put the spare sleepers in there just to make it look pretty. The connectors are actually phosphor bronze, so they conduct really well and they solder even easier. I'm not going to solder these, there's no need to, but that looks nice. It's only at the end there, so I don't really need an expansion gap. There's expansion gaps further down that side anyway, so that's, that's, that's spot on. So I'm now going to straighten this track out, get the sleepers in place there, and get the ballast on. And then hopefully once I've glued it all and ballasted it all and then just some gentle weight on it to keep it in place, that should be good to go. 
Okay, so we're doing the ballasting now. Um, and my plan worked, by the way. The track is supported by the ballast, so that's nice. So I'm going to finish this little section off now. Get some ballast glue on there, you know, PVA and IPA, what have you. And then weight it down and then leave it till the morning. So we'll see this tomorrow morning. Right, so it's now the day after. And I'm happy to report that all the ballast has dried on the track. Um, what I did was, is this morning I came to the layout. And the track was all dry and everything was in place. So I decided to do a bit more ballasting. Uh, hence why things are still drying on here. Because when I re-ballasted it, I accidentally wet the track again. <laughs> so I had to do it all again. But here we are. We live and we learn. One thing that you don't get really get the impression for is when you're working with this track. And for all the reviews that you'll see. This is just the spare bit that I've got left over there. All the reviews that you'll see is they don't actually tell you how much easier it actually is to work with this stuff versus the other options out there you know the stuff you might find with a uh, set track piece of kit home bp eco etc apart from the fact this the, uh, the sleepers are spaced properly apart when you bend this track it actually stays how you bent it See what I mean? And believe it or not, that makes it so much easier to actually work with. So you're not having to keep bending it back like you do with the other set track on the market. Certainly I found that when I've worked with the Hornby stuff or the Pico stuff before, I have to bend it and then I really have to hold it in place or nail it down and then I've got I need three sets of hands. I didn't need that with this so I'm really glad that I bought it. I think now that I've made the transition from set track <coughs> over to this stuff here, the bullhead, the proper you know proper spacing one of you, I don't think I'm honestly going to be able to make that transition backwards anymore. I think now that I am um, using this stuff I'm going to stay with it so any layouts that I build in the future I'll definitely be using this truck might not use the bull head but to be fair with you you can just sort of see down there how straight that is and I've just done it with my hands as well but certainly the spacing and the ease of use with this, with this stuff is a lot better and if you look even at the, the sleeper chairs and things they are a lot nicer. Certainly I would suggest that this goes a long way from the train set track you get and this is what I would call model track. The sleepers, the spacing, the rail itself is a lot better. So I'm happy with that. Nice one. Okay just to finish up so the little the, the new base unit if you're using the track as a pointer now come on get a grip. This is the new version of it. The other one I built with the fiberglass just didn't work, it was horrible. So I'm going on from what you saw earlier in this video, I've paper mache over it. I'm going to put another layer of paper mache on again. Then I'm going to add little structures and then paper mache over those. Then that's going to give me my retaining wall there and a little scene so I can put some hills on it and stuff. And I think there's a lot more clearance now. So the wagon's actually... They actually go through without catching, so I'm a lot happy with that now. So that's a lot better. Pleased with how that's turned out so far. A lot better than the other version. Next video, hopefully there'll be a bit more progress on that. Sorry this week's a bit short, I've been very busy with work, not been well, and there's been a few family issues, you know, life gets in the way, doesn't it? So there we are. So that's it for this week, folks. I will see you all bright and early next Thursday for another edition of... I know it's weekly. Uh, take care and I'll see you all soon. Cheers now. Bye bye.